Hey everyone, today is November 20th, 2023, and we are out on the logging roads. It's been pretty cold the past couple days, so the road is frozen, and that's why it's so loud. There's no soft dirt, there's no give at all, it's pretty frozen, so you can hear every single bump I'm going over. And I'm driving the old car, which is not good on these roads at all. A couple areas in the sun are a little muddy, which is slippery, but the majority of the road is very frozen and a little slippery. Let's do a brake check. That's not bad at all. Actually, back there at an intersection, I did a little drift around the corner because it was icy. But I guess it's because it was the intersection. Vehicles turning, packed it down, and made it even more slippery around the corner. But right there, it did pretty good. I do have the studded tires on. Today out here on the logging road, I saw somebody's pickup truck that had spike tires, which have been illegal for decades out on the public roads. But that vehicle, it's probably a logger who rarely, if ever, leaves these roads. Spike tires are little tiny spikes that I believe you unscrew them if it's like the old-fashioned ones. Little spikes, you unscrew them during every storm. I mean, screw them in for every snowstorm, go on the public roads, and then you would have had to take them off when the roads became pavement again, not snow covered. And that's why they're illegal now, because most people were too lazy to take them back out, and they would destroy the pavement when there was no snow on them. It's the same thing with tire chains. I believe you can use them anywhere as long as there is snow on the road. I remember a few years ago a tire place tried to tell me chains were illegal just to try to sell me studded tires, but they're not. If the road is snow covered, then you can use them. At least in my area we can use the chains anywhere as long as the road is snow covered and conditions are bad. Then you got to take them off, obviously, or they'll ruin the road and be dangerous because you'll break them on the without the snow, potentially. So I have realized that snow tires make a huge difference from all-season tires out on the roads because they're softer, grips the snow better. I didn't notice a huge difference adding studs and having no studs, but it definitely helps. You can see the scrapes on the ice of where it was sliding, digging in a little bit. Now as far as I've ever noticed, like up here north, you don't notice little dinged up areas from the tires. Except on concrete I notice, like in drive throughs or inside garages like uh, auto repair shop garages, you'll notice it damages the concrete a little bit. But I never noticed it on the asphalt. I know areas where snowmobiles are crossing over the pavement, they actually have spikes on their tracks. So it causes a good amount of damage, it makes a little rough spot. But other than that, I've never noticed the spikes having damage. I know that New Hampshire and Vermont, you can leave the studded tires on year round. Those states don't really care about that. Where I'm driving right now, it looks like an area that might have a beaver problem. I want to get out for a quick second and take a look at what I just drove by. I'm seeing elevated water in the ditch. What do we got here? We've got a culvert here. Just want to take a look at it. See what we got going on with the beavers. Right here where these rocks are. Looks like might be a beaver problem. Might be one better off left for spring. It depends on the ice. I don't think the ice is thick though. So stepping out, the road is slippery. There is a good amount of ice underneath this little coating of snow. So I do believe there is a beaver problem. Look how low the water is here on the outside of the culvert pipe. Looks like we have a two foot plastic pipe there. I can hear water echoing through because there is a little waterfall where it's slipping through. See the dip right here, and I can tell by the ground a little torn up. It was put in at the beginning of the year, giving it enough time for some grass to grow back, but it is a pretty recent pipe. So yeah, there is a culvert pipe down here. Might be one we'll leave until the spring. We'll see. 
Or if we come back in this area, I'll do it at some point. Although we're going to have to investigate this area first. That's the reason I'm hesitating right now. It means I got to get the big high boots on. And I have to go ahead and make my way back in this swamp and do some due diligence before removing that. Because this looks like a decent body of water right here. There's at least a couple feet held up by that pipe. It's at least two feet higher on this side from the other side. We got to go look around, like walk the entire bank and look for a potential beaver lodge. And if we find a beaver lodge, then we can't go in there now. This big pile of junk with the trees around, it looks like it could have been a beaver lodge at some point. It could be one well in disguise. But the beavers were active here recently and I'm sure they're still active because this is clogged up by the beavers. But yeah, that pipe I can tell was put in at the beginning of the year. I've never understood, if I look at a map of the tire chain laws in the United States, okay, it obviously makes sense it's illegal to have studded tires in a state like Florida. There's like no need for it whatsoever. You'd only be going there as a visitor with them on your car and it would tear up their roads. Now, that right there is a problem because in places where it's they don't get a lot of winter, the asphalt and um, concrete roads, they last forever because they don't have the damaging frost that'll lift them up, crack them, destroy them. So roads in warmer places, they last forever. And you go down with studded tires, over time, that's gonna cause damage. But up here, because of winter destroying the roads, the roads themselves are replaced often enough where you would never notice the wear and tear from them. And that's why states like Vermont and New Hampshire, they don't care if you leave them on year round. They just do not care. Now right here, na neighboring Maine, why does Maine not also allow it year-round? Who knows? It's obviously not required in the summer, but because our summers are so short, I think that's why the neighboring states don't really care. It also doesn't get severely hot where the softer rubber tire would be at risk of exploding in the summer, but it would wear down faster on the hot roads. And um, one thing that doesn't make sense in Maine is you can only legally have studded tires on between a certain date. I believe they have to be off at April 30th or May 1st, which does not make sense at all because the northern part of the state here can receive snow into the middle of June historically. So that law makes no sense and I proved it back in the spring. I made videos where I mentioned that exact law. I was showing myself driving through snow on these roads deep enough to get stuck in in the month of May, but yet those tires are supposed to be illegal that time of the year. That right there doesn't make sense at all. So I think, especially Maine being literally in certain areas hundreds of miles further north than New Hampshire, why don't we have that law? That doesn't make sense. But then you have states like Michigan and I believe um, Minnesota, they're outright illegal, but they're very cold states that have rural areas you look into why they're illegal and they say that they have improved their roads enough for winter safety that they're not required. I think that's absolutely stupid that they're illegal in those states and you can get a fine if you go there in the winter from a neighboring state that allows them. So stupid. And then you have states like Georgia that rarely get snow and if they do get snow it melts extremely fast. Georgia, you can have studded tires apparently year round. They don't care. Why? That makes no sense to me in a state like that. But I believe there's only five states that don't allow them at all. I think, I know Texas is one. I know that Florida's one, obviously. Probably Hawaii is one, obviously. I don't know what the other two are. But Texas is one, especially recent years. They've been getting some icy snowstorms that don't melt for a week or two at a time. So maybe they should change that a little there. And then there's other places 
like California, maybe that should become a split state because they got the areas that are warm and tropical where their roads last forever, but yet that state has to have the laws allowing snow tires and studded tires because half of the state is rural mountains that get snow as deep as a two-story building, while other spots, they never get snow, it's desert. And then Canada being so cold, you would think that they would allow studs everywhere, but no. Ontario residents are not allowed to have studded tires, but at least they have a law allowing visitors, people out of state, out of country, to pass through and visit without getting a fine having those. Why doesn't Michigan and Minnesota have that law? Why can't I visit there in the winter with my studded tires like I can visit Ontario? Doesn't make any sense. Laws like that. Just, they don't make sense in my head for those reasons. Just like up here, uh, the growing season in northern Maine doesn't start until June 15th, so we can potentially get a little snow up until then. Usually not. Definitely in the month of May. So that should be extended by at least a few more weeks in my opinion. I usually try to pause the cameras when we're driving by road signs because there's some trolls in the comments who love to go ahead and contact the logging companies saying I'm causing malicious damage to the culverts. But it actually had done nothing but good. Actually, a logging company went out of their way to figure out who I was to offer me a job. I declined because this is so far away from my house, but I have permission to go out here and do what I want as a result from it, so it makes me feel a lot more confident and safe doing it. They must have seen the name of the company up on the side of one of the trucks, I assume. And also someone tried to report my channel to the park rangers in the main north woods for messing around with culvert pipes. It resulted in me getting a free road pass. I no longer have to pay the $16 a day toll, $30 a night, I believe it is, overnight stay. It's all, it's all wave now, thanks to a troll contacting them, thinking they'd be mad about me touching things. but it was extremely cold so we were out here able to go to places that are usually very muddy they were frozen over but there was no snow we were able to walk out on frozen ponds that were very thickly covered with ice but no snow it's kind of interesting looks like they've been doing some road work here what is this wall this wasn't here last time oh it's a ramp is it yeah it's a ramp for the road at first i was like is that a wall in case the drainage ditch is over capacity? You know, so it doesn't move over into the road? No, that is a abandoned logging road. The end is a little overgrown. That's not water related. Here we got a culvert pipe. A little eroded on the edges. Wow, that's a very far drop. That's a, that's a full on brook down there. Right here you see a lot of rocks. This area has tons of water flowing down it during rain. There's a drainage ditch over to the right. It's, it needs to be dug out. It's almost non-existent, but the water can't get to it is the problem. The grader pushed over a bunch of stuff, making like a curb, preventing it from getting in there.
time of year I could probably drive days without passing another car at certain times potentially I can tell by the tire marks it just snowed two days ago so at least a couple dozen vehicles have been down here I'm not seeing the tire tracks of a log truck though I did back on the main artery though not here this is probably mostly hunters coming out looking for deer this time of year Yeah, I actually saw a ton of hunters. Like I saw a guy today, he had a bunch of bloodhounds with him. I wonder what he's hunting. Usually guys have a lot of dogs when they're hunting um, some birds, I believe. But I know it's not turkey season yet. At least I don't think it is. It might be coming up. Or maybe they just have the dogs to go after an animal gets away if they didn't get their shot right. I'm not sure. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me about that. Right here I can see a bunch of the trees are already getting a little ready for spring. The ends of all the branches on the maple trees are starting to get that tint of red. All the buds are developing already. A lot of the trees are healthier this year from all the rain. Hopefully we get another pretty rainy year like that. This road is very bad. I'm feeling it a lot, if anyone can tell. I'm using my older vehicle if I didn't mention that. Just because my other one I left at the shop overnight. Probably leave it there for a couple days while I'm out here. So I'm having the beams adjusted. I got pulled over for the low beams being too high. So I'm having that adjusted down. Although in the spring I had them adjusted because I thought to myself, the beams are, hey, they're too high. You know, I was having to drive around with the high beams intentionally to shut them off when a car comes so they could see that they were actually down and the dealer said they lowered them a little bit but they said that's just because they're LED lights they're super bright but now that I got pulled over I'm gonna have them lower them even more like I took a good picture for the dealer to show them at night it's projecting a beam on all the trees that's like six feet off the ground and they tried the first time telling me that's just because they're LED but I'm, I insist on them lowering them again, especially having got pulled over. This section of road is actually graded pretty good, except for the bumps. Most of the bumps are just because it's, I, I think it's recently graded. They just didn't pull out some of the rocks. The frost also drives a bunch of rocks up every year and it forces them out of the ground up to three feet deep. Yeah, this was very recently graded. You can see all the rocks on the edges of the road that the grader was able to pull up and out.
had to ever use them one time on the logging road. Because before the snow plow gets out here, a lot of times the big heavy trucks can pack it down where the snow plow is never going to get it off. It's going to have to melt in the spring. And that makes it extremely slippery the first brief defrost. Then it refreezes like sheer ice and studded tires won't really help you at that point. Then you got to chain up. That is on the roads that they're not logging. A lot of the roads, they actually will have trucks out putting gravel on top of the ice. So it's as if they're treating it. That does help a lot. Because they'd rather, it seems, treat the roads, the logging roads, with gravel or sand than have the tractor trailers chain up. Because when the tractor trailer chains up, that means they have to drive a lot slower now. And it costs money. I think it's cheaper for them to actually treat the road. Because when they're loaded up, chained up, those truckers have to keep it under 30. But even on the icy roads, they'll still be hauling at 50 miles an hour in the winter if it's not slippery. I can see the road way up on that hill there that we're probably going to be driving up in a few minutes. We have a big hill coming up. I'll keep recording for a little bit longer. Maybe we'll find something interesting. I think where I stopped back there for that beaver blockage, the next time I'm out here will probably be in just a couple of days. That's why I'm not prioritizing even stopping there today. We'll come back out in a couple of days when I have a lot more daylight and we can investigate that area. I want to look around for a beaver lodge. A lot of people assume that I hate the beavers because of what I do. They got that all wrong. I'm just out there to make sure they don't flood and destroy the road because they're going to create a hazard once they start flooding it over. Well, like that pipe I stopped at earlier in the video, in the spring thaw, if that pipe can't work, it's going to go over the road, creating a ton of ice and maybe rubbing it up and washing it out. So that hill I just pointed out, that may have been right there to the right. I'm not sure. In fact, a lot of times when the beavers clog these pipes, a good amount of time it's a secondary pond, meaning they don't live at it. And by removing it, that's actually saving the beavers' lives in a lot of cases. Because the beaver hunter will go around looking for the flooded out areas. It attracts the beaver hunter seeing the floods. But it, without the floods, it's buying the beaver's time to hopefully get relocated by the trapper instead of shot by the hunter, if you want to look at it that way. It depends on the area. If the DOT is taking care of the beavers, they'll often relocate them to a drier area out west. That's what their program does to help mitigate drought. Because the beavers holding up water during the wet times helps during the dry times, having that big reserve of water. Beaver ponds also very heavy, pushing water, recharging the aquifers. And then the beaver ponds during a drought, when they slowly go down, they're helping the forest during the drought, but by the end of the drought, the beaver pond will be empty or so. It'll have a good amount of capacity now. So once it starts raining again, it prevents flooding. It retains all that water from washing things out downstream. So that's why the beavers are good. But a lot of private landowners, they will just have someone go out and hunt them off, such as the logging companies. But it depends with the logging companies. A good amount of logging companies, they will actually work with the park rangers, so they, they will be relocated, especially in places like the Great Maine Northwoods. A lot of them will be relocated in that area, which is, I believe, I, I actually don't know, but I know it's close to a dozen million acres. It's a huge area of land. But Northern Maine combined logging forest is over 16 million acres, the majority of it being part of the Northwoods. A good amount of the Northwoods is privately owned by logging companies. Very little of it is actually state or federal land. The vast majority is private land, 
but it's open to anyone who wants to hunt it, camp on it. They don't really care about any of that. Especially Maine having the good laws. If you get your car destroyed out there, you can't go after those logging companies. Good luck even trying to get that into court because you were the one who was stupid enough to bring your vehicle out there and get it stuck in a certain spot. You can't blame them for that. You literally pass giant signs saying it's at your own risk this time of year. And this time of year, once we get into snow season, spring thaw, mud season, you'll see a ton of signs that say things like 4x4 only, deep mud, no cars, 5000 or $500 fine. I've seen both. I actually have a sign that I asked because the guy had a giant stack. I was wondering if I could have one of them and they gave me one. It says something, I have it hanging on my wall at home. It says something like trucks only, $5,000 fine if you get stuck. Or yeah, something like that. I know the state of New Hampshire puts up a bunch of signs on recreational roads that say not it's not maintained for winter travel. Minimum $500 fine if you get stuck and have to be pulled out. And it also says things like no highway vehicles. If you ignore this sign, $500 minimum fine to get pulled out. Yeah, look at this area. The sun is hitting it hard. So it's got a lot of mud. There's no snow here. But once we go around the next corner with a bunch of shade, it'll be icy again. Here we go. Here comes the ice again where the snow hasn't got melted by the sun. How slippery are we? Not slippery at all. And around the next corner, back into the sun. It can quickly become mud this time of year. This time of year, it's back and forth between frost, mud, frozen, wet. It's actually 28 degrees right now and the sun is still strong enough to be melting it. We're a little below freezing. I think it's around 2 degrees Celsius, negative 2. But here we got a big gravel pit. They did a good amount of work around here with drainage. This used to be a big mud hole driving through here a year ago. This is where they get all their material to fix the roads. See, it's very rocky sand that they'll pick up with dump trucks and go dump them out on the roads. Ooh, big rut. Not so much this time of year because there is no deep frost yet but in the spring when these areas freeze down like three feet into the ground then you'll be having issues with mud so the log trucks during mud season they'll have third shift only they'll only be logging from I believe 10 p.m. to about noon around those hours because it's too muddy in the daytime but it quickly freezes up to hold the trucks for the nighttime like when I was camping underneath the logging bridge last year, the truck actually stopped on the bridge and told me that there would be a ton of noise at night sleeping there. It's, it's the opposite in the summertime. Not many log trucks at night. I kind of like this here. You see how it's very frosty and snowy in the shade? And look at this, it quickly just opens up where the road's actually dry. my culverts pretty well like based on the area I think we have another one coming up that we've unclogged before and another couple of road twists I think so and we got snow cover again for like 50 feet got a blue box over there hanging on that tree no it's a sign mile marker too. At first I thought it was going to be one of those 
Asian longhorn beetle traps. They're usually blue or a purple box or triangular box hanging from a tree that collects them. A lot of times they're just to figure out if they're in the area or not. I think I just went over the culvert pipe I was talking about. If you could see the water to the left is kind of flooded. There's beavers in there. Yeah, I see a big beaver dam. They're not causing a problem being downstream, but oftentimes the beaver will clog the culvert upstream from their pond for secondary water storage, and that's when they get trapped and moved. But every now and then you'll get a beaver that has a different mindset that just leaves it alone forever for some reason. Yeah, often aside, the entire area is numerous beaver ponds with a series of dams. Perfect spot for them because it's away from the road. But like I said, they'll often come up here wanting another dam. I think all the tracks we're seeing today are from the hunters. I don't see any logging trucks, no double tire tracks. No wide turn marks. loggers all the time loading up the back of their pickup truck with all this debris bringing it back to their camper or mobile home that they stay in out here to run the wood stove they'll go and collect a whole ton of this stuff from these openings lately I've been seeing certain logging companies they don't leave all the debris on the ground like this anymore they've been like tidying it up into piles to prevent fires I believe because around here it has never been issues as far as forest fires. They're usually put out fast, even out here in the wilderness. But I think they're getting a little more concerned after this year. This year was the first year ever in my life that I saw forest fire smoke literally every day of the summer. It was bad. Usually the East Coast doesn't see that. A lot of the smoke was coming from Western Canada, but earlier in the year, in the spring, a lot of it was coming from up in Quebec, which is only a couple hundred miles away. So if they're severely on fire, here it could become severely on fire. But this year was extremely wet. A couple hundred miles north wasn't wet at all. Yeah, this year it would have been almost impossible for a forest fire to start in this area. It was really wet and very below average temperatures. I don't know, maybe that was triggered by the wildfire smoke and being so cool this year. Because it was the complete opposite of last year being above average. So this far north in Maine, I, I'm i certain the average temperature is a little bit lower than where I am. Maybe 72 or something like that. Where I am the average temperature is 76 in the summer. Last year it got to 91, being very dry. The average summer day temp was 91, so that was above average and it caused a lot of damage to the forest since the root systems of the northern trees only go down to like two feet, so they couldn't reach the water and there was a lot of die-outs. The forest recovered a ton this summer because of the rain. If we can get a couple more seasons like that, I think it'll come back nice, start filling in again. But this year the average was actually in the 60s, the entire opposite, so that's what helped a lot. Northern New England is supposed to be cool and rainy, but not that cool. It might have been the wildfire smoke keeping it cool, shading it like a big cloud. I have 
I've noticed since I was little, over the years, it seems like pine trees, they're slowly moving north, like their boundary of where they can live. It just seems like that. It seems like over the years, the areas I used to go when I was little compared to now, over the past two decades, it seems the mostly the pine trees and the fir trees, it seems like they're slowly being replaced by things like maples and birch. The evergreens seem to be slowly going away, it seems, from the higher temperatures. They just can't take it. I think it's mostly the root systems can't handle the prolonged periods of no rain. There's also a lot of invasive bugs moving north. I know I have emerald ash borer. Although it being a rainier year, that seems to slow the emerald ash borer down a lot. Because when it's rainy, the trees are healthier, creating more sap, which the invasive bugs get stuck in. That's why sap is beneficial so much to a tree, especially evergreen trees. They produce very sticky sap that you don't want to get on yourself because you have to do a ton of scrubbing. So when a evergreen tree is healthy, whether it be fir, pine, or spruce, they all do the exact same thing. They'll be dripping in sap, covered in sap when they're healthy. A healthy evergreen tree should be very sticky, something you don't want to touch or park your car underneath. A dry year, it won't be leaking sap barely at all. But a healthy year, it'll be covered in bubbles all over the edge of it, where if you poke them, they pop and get all over you. I remember when I was a little kid, especially the fir trees, if you know what I'm talking about. If you live up here, you'll know what I'm talking about. The fir trees are covered in little bubbles all along the trunk. And if you pop them, it gets all over you. It used to be kind of fun to pop as a kid, although that's kind of mean to do to the tree. On a healthy year, it doesn't hurt the tree. It'll heal up very fast. But those bubbles are their little reserve of fluids for the drier times. We're driving by a bunch of tamarack trees right now to the left, all the trees that, the pine trees that are they look dead at this time of year. The only kind of pine tree that drops its needles. I'm gonna get out in a moment and show you guys the bubbles on the edge of a tree. Like what I'm gonna do it right now. Let's see if we can find some of the fir tree bubbles that I'm talking about. This was a healthier year, so maybe we can find some. This one has a good top, it looks pretty healthy. See if we can find any of these bubbles I'm talking about. Not seeing it on that one. No, not seeing it. Let's go down in here for a minute. Ooh, see? This one's got a good amount of sap. You see this injury? It's like slowly closing. Before the tree completely heals over it, the injury is supposed to get completely covered by dripping sap so bugs can't get into it. See, this is kind of dried up. Like you ever see the mosquitoes that get trapped from prehistoric times, it'll land on the sap and it can't get off it. Then it's just preserved, like in the Jurassic Park movies. Yeah, these trees are dead. They're not gonna have anything on them because I'm in a swamp. The water table killed everything. These mushrooms look pretty nice. Let's see what we can find out here. Let's see if we can find a healthy looking one. I'm not seeing any healthy looking ones with the bubbles at the moment. That one's completely dead. If it wasn't frozen, I'd be sinking. This is like a big mud hole. This is another dead one. Do I hear a car coming? Or is that just the wind? Wow, I didn't think it was gonna be so hard to find this. I think I stopped in the wrong section. There's barely any fir trees that I'm, or the right type I'm looking for. That moss is nice. Ah, oh, man. Like I'm seeing little bubbles right here. Like that will become fully extended where you can easily pop it, but I'm not seeing too much. I'm actually getting my feet a little wet. 
Yeah, I could not have stopped in a worse spot. Actually, this dead one right here has a good example. See, it, it's dead. Yeah, you see if we, you see all these bumps? That's the sap reserves. And if the tree's healthy, they'll be very bloated and they'll be absolutely everywhere. You see them all? Healthier, they'll be very vibrant. And they'll even be leaking down on itself to help protect against bugs. Like there's a bug hole there. I wonder, even though the tree's been dead for probably at least five years, maybe even more, is there still anything in there? No, that's completely hardened into amber. I didn't even have to walk out in the swamp. Look at this, right next to the road, we got a good example. Not a great example, actually. There's not a ton of them, but I accidentally just popped one getting up to the road. I just accidentally popped one of its bubbles. Like, let's see if I can pop another to show you. All right, right here, see this lump? Oh, look at that, just got, it just pushed sap out of it. Like, yeah, look at that sap I'm just pushing out, see it? Although it's pretty solidified because it's cold out, but in the summer, it's very runny. Like that's so solidified, it's barely sticky. It didn't even stick to my skin, it's so hard. But summer, that would have been a lot worse. Let's maybe look across the road. The younger trees seem to have more of them because the bark is smooth compared to the rougher, tougher bark on the big tree. But like I said, I just stopped at the worst spot to show these examples. Right now we're in like a abandoned gravel pit. So you can tell they were taking stuff out of here at some point. These aren't even balsam fir trees. This is something different that I'm looking at now. The needles are a bit different. Back in the car. Well, at least I was able to show you a little bit. But when the trees are really healthy and if I'm in the right correct spot where there's not water literally drowning them out like that, there's sometimes thousands of those little bubbles all close to each other like that. stop somewhere where it looks very healthy where you can't even see through the woods yeah but especially like I mentioned the droughts and bugs it's not the easiest place to find very dense vegetation like back in the day give it a couple more wet years it'll come back the trees that are existing here will fill back in pretty nicely if they have the time to do so now my finger's getting sticky now that I'm back in here and a little bit on me's warming up, but really not bad at all. That's one of the reasons I love doing tree work when it's very cold out. If I have to cut up a tree that just fell over that was healthy, I have to, I want to do that in the winter. That makes such a mess if I have to cut up trees in the summer. The saps. road icy yeah it's a lot more icy that I slid a good amount there yeah cuz here I just turned on to a different road this one obviously has more traffic maybe even log trucks it looks like something went around that corner very wide yeah see it if I yeah this I'm having trouble stopping if I yeah I just did a ton of wheels spinning out there on the ice I just slid a little bit when I went to turn fast because I just missed the road I wanted to go down and quickly just spun around on that triangle right there down the other road yeah there, there's some icy spots around right here all the trucks were going that way I just turned off of the main road it appears Now I'm on a little mission to look for an area of very dense vegetation. I 
think around here the pine trees aren't as dense because it doesn't seem like they're replanting them. A lot of areas when they cut it down they'll replant it very nicely and it looks like a overgrown Christmas tree farm. Around here it doesn't look like they're replanting anything. It looks like they're just letting random stuff grow back which obviously things like birch and maple grow faster so it kills off any of the pine trees. Shades them out. Let's see if we can get ice here. No, nope, not as bad because the big rigs didn't go down here. They're the ones that pack it so hard and slippery. Maybe, maybe the big rigs are even melting it a little bit to make it harder, if that makes sense. Because some of those trucks, I've seen them so loaded up that the tires look half flat on the trailer. And when your tires are half flat, it's flexing every time it goes around spinning and it generates heat. That might also be it. Because I know if I'm driving around with a tire that's half flat, when I get where I'm going, touch that tire compared to the others, it's hot. I don't do that intentionally. But there has been times it was like, it's not even worth me blowing it up just to drive a little bit. So I wait until, it, until I get home to pump it up. Those trees good. Crunch. Let's get out. Look at that. The tree stood up like nothing even happened. Now look at that. I love that how I just crunch down the grass and it just stays there because it's all hard and frozen. Here looks like a pretty healthy area. It looks like. Yep, these are balsam fir. Let's see if we got anything in here. This is a pretty healthy looking section, it appears. What do we got for bubbleage here? It's nothing like I remember when I was a kid, but we do have some of the little bubbles. Not a great example though. Yeah, look at it, it just wiped off so easily because it's frozen. Yeah, this is a very great section here. That right there I noticed immediately. Most of these trees actually in here, see how they look dead? They're not dead, they're um, tamarack. They just lost their needles for the winter. So it looks like only the ones right out by the road actually know what I was looking for. Yeah, look, see, that's got a pretty fat bubble right there. Look at this. Yeah. Oh wow, here's the best example. Look at the bubbles on this one. And you see there's also ones that aren't full. Like, you can barely see this one. If this tree had a lot more water, it would fill up a lot more. Look at that one, that one's huge. All right, this is gonna be the last one we pop. And the tree does heal very good for, from this. This right here, once it starts growing again in the spring, this will be gone fast. Ooh, that was a good one, look at that. But. 
certain times a year, they'll be leaking and bugs get stuck in what I just did. A lot of them, when they get really big and bulged like that, they'll naturally start dripping out. Like, see this one in the summer? Naturally started dripping. Or maybe a squirrel running up, it sunk its nail into there. Could have been either or. That tree right there is the best example. That's how I remember every single one when I was a kid in the forest seemed to get more rain. It builds up that reserve of sap. So when it's dry out, the tree can reabsorb it back into itself to keep itself alive. Or if it has enough water, it'll use it to protect itself from bugs. Pretty nice. That was the best example I saw. I think I'm going to end the video here in just a moment. I just want to stop right here. We might have a culvert. I definitely see a little bit of pooling water and the way the land is. It seems like there could be a pipe. Maybe not. Maybe it, maybe the ground's porous enough that it just sinks in without requiring a pipe. But I think there might be a pipe. Yep. There's a 18-inch corrugated metal one. And it's wide open. It might have a little bit of grass in the way, but I don't see a problem. Yeah, this is like a swamp, but I can tell in the winter, this is one of the reasons they love logging in the winter. Once this freezes solid, look at this. You can tell logging equipment was driving right up the riverbed when it was frozen solid. I hope this video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day.